Like most updates that were announced last week at WWDC 2025, macOS 26, aka macOS Tahoe, is a pretty solid upgrade. And so in this video, we go hands-on for the first time to take a look at some of the major new features. As usual, I have to make a reference that this is a beta, so what you see here could be changed when officially released later this year. Now I'm going to try to keep the crossover as minimal as possible, but that's pretty tough to do considering that there's more feature parity than ever before. And now there's a new universal design language, and it's called Apple's Liquid Glass Design. And it's across all of the platforms, including macOS. So as you can see here, we have tons of frosted and liquidy glass goodness scattered throughout the entire operating system. The menu bar doesn't even really exist anymore. Instead, it's completely transparent. But the menu bar options and things like control center toggles, those are all in that liquid glass design. You can also add more control center toggles if you wish. You can add them to the control center or the menu bar itself. We have a lot of new app tools toolbars, sidebars, and buttons that have been rounded and or featuring liquid glass, like you see here with the new music play bar at the bottom of the music app. And I just really enjoy how a lot of these sidebars seem less in the way, and it just looks like they're hovering over the content that's below it. You can also customize your lock screen clock a little bit, which is a very similar process found on your iPhone and your iPad. Speaking of customization, Folders get a nice little customization tweak as you can now add colors to the folders and you can have custom icons or emojis to give each folder a little bit more flair. Spotlight might have received one of the biggest upgrades that it's probably ever had with improved functionality, improved search, which is really important, and a few new useful features. So when you initially launch into Spotlight, you know, command spacebar, it will look pretty much the same right off the bat, but the moment you move that mouse towards it, you'll see four broken off little bubbles to the right of it. And you can select these options with either your mouse or you can use the keyboard shortcuts for better efficiency. So command one, two, three, or four. And this will help you get into your applications, files, actions, and clipboard. Yes, that's right, there's finally a clipboard manager that we can access by simply hitting Command-4. And you can see your entire history of that day, and you can go back and recopy and paste anything that you might need. Now, Command-1 will bring up your apps, which you can customize the look of if you aren't a fan. It's kind of broken down by categories and the app icons, and you can either go by list view and app icons, or just list view with text, whatever you want. This is also what Launchpad has been replaced with. So so no longer are you getting full screen kind of horizontal scrolling apps. You now have this screen. If you go down to the dock and you click Launchpad, which has now been named to Apps, it'll just bring up the same UI. Now, Command 2 is where you'll search for files, but the most intriguing one is Command 3, or you can hover over and click on the Actions icon. This is where you can run certain macOS actions that are incredibly useful, like being able to send a message directly in Spotlight or email directly from Spotlight. I can send an email by just simply typing in the action, and then I can type in my message, select the recipient, and add a subject line. And then I'll hit Enter, and you won't see anything, but you'll hear the signature of mail sent sound effect with your email immediately on its way. And this is exactly what happened here. It was almost instantaneous. Now you can also set quick keys for this. So I programmed SE to be send email, but if I wanted to show you here to do one, it's pretty simple. Just hover over a timer, for example, ST for set timer. And then I type in the duration and boom, a timer has now been set and it's incredibly useful. And finally, there are four new applications that come with your Mac in Mac OS 26. You have the journal app, which is ported over from iOS. So now you can type out your thoughts and the journal for the day. You can get just things done a lot more quickly on the Mac, I feel. So if you wanna do that, you can do that on your Mac. There's a magnifier app, which we kind of saw a few weeks before WWDC. Apple showcased some of the accessibility features. Now you can use your iPhone and continuity with the magnifier app, and you can kind of like zoom in if you're in a big lecture hall, zoom in on the notes and it'll scan everything. And then there's also the phone app. So you can now make phone calls. You can screen calls and get all of the call assist and hold assist functionality that was uh, introduced in iOS 26. That's all brought over to the macOS version, which is great. Finally, we have the new games app, which ties in game center functionality and the ability to play certain games with your friends, as well as your entire library of games that you've ever downloaded from the app store or have installed via third party platforms like Steam. This just makes things so much easier to access your games 
browse for new games, see what your friends are playing, what records have been broken and challenges and all of that just in one dedicated section. And you can even see a dedicated section just for browsing Apple Arcade games too. There are a lot more features that we didn't talk about, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss more macOS 26 slash macOS Lake Tahoe content and other platform beta hands-on videos from me in the future. Of course, I would also love to hear from you and your thoughts on macOS Tahoe in the comments down below. This has been Down With Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you around in the next video.